Hello. So I read um, one more thing uh, for the Halloween season, and it's uh, one of my favorite stories to go back to. It's uh, The Overcoat by Nikolai Gogol, uh, and it's the story of a, a poor copy clerk. He's a strange fellow. Um, he's extremely um, reliable, diligent, um, hard, hard, hard working. Um, they give you a, Google gives you a little examples of the type of person that he is. Uh, he was such a good copy clerk that his boss came to him one day and um, <clears throat> decided to give him a little bit um, more of an um, important assignment. <clears throat> and it was to take a, a document and uh, transliterate it into a letter. And all that it required was to change the heading and to change, uh, change it from first person to third person. And uh, the, the, the copy clerk's name is Akeki. I, I think that's how you say it, Akeki Akekovich. Well, anyway, he hears this and just goes pale and says, I, I, I'd rather just do strict copying. That, that's what I do. And he was never given any um, extra assignments after that, anything that might give him uh, a promotion or anything. Uh, it gets stranger than that. He goes, um, after work, he goes home and he has a meager meal. And in his leisure time, uh, he does copywriting until he falls asleep. Very similar, like has similarities to uh, Bartleby, uh, Herman Melville's Bartleby. Um, and a lot, a lot of Gogol's stories also uh, are, are um, reminiscent of um, Kafka's stories, or Kafka's reminiscent of Gogol. Um, in any event, uh, Akeki, um, his uh, overcoat is become um, threadbare, and he goes to uh, his uh, tailor who um, normally uh, repairs patches, resews his overcoat, uh, and he meets him, and the, um, the tailor uh, says that th there's nothing more to be done. It's, it's an overcoat that's destroyed. And he needs a new overcoat. And this just sends Akeki reeling. He has no money. <laughs> he, can't, he can't afford this overcoat. Uh, but he needs it because it's freezing in, uh, I think, St. Petersburg is where it's set. And he goes off to figure out his budget, and he's like, well, I, I can stop eating in the evenings. Um, I'll turn my candle, I'll snuff out my candles, I won't use candles anymore. Uh, he, he talks about uh, walking on his tippy toes to uh, not have to resole his shoes. He thinks if he could start walking lightly on his toes, he could save money on... Um, going to the cobbler, um, different things happen, and uh, fi finally him and the tailor work out uh, this fantastic overcoat that Akeki is going to be um, getting, be custom made for him. And uh, he picks it up and he put, puts it on, and uh, they sprung for the cat hair collar. Uh, they had uh, some kind of, they had chintz lining, which they felt was better than, uh, even better than silk. Um, anyway, so now Akeki goes back to work and is now donning this overcoat of his. And people kind of notice and say, hey, nice overcoat. And it causes such a stir that they decide, one of his supervisors, they're gonna have a party and they decide to invite a cake he to go to it. 
and um, he he reluctantly accepts. Um, and later on, he goes to the supervisor, the supervisor's uh, uh, house where the where the party is being held. And he walks in. And there's lines of boots, and there's candles um, ev everywhere, and um, on on the coat racks is lines of coats, and there are e people are in there eating liver, um, drinking champagne, and uh, after all of the excitement goes by with uh, his coat again, he immediately a cake. He immediately becomes uncomfortable and kind of wants to get out of there. Well, they won't let him leave. They start giving him a couple glasses of champagne and not too much longer, but he's there longer than he would like. Finally, he escapes. He found his overcoat on the floor, which uh, bothered him, but he, he puts it on and goes out the door. And um, walk, walking home, he's, he's in like the town square um, he gets mugged. Guy comes over and punches him in the face. Another guy comes over, rips his coat off of him, and uh, just leaves him. Sends him reeling. Uh, he runs over to a police officer. Um, he just can't even contain himself. The next day, people are talking. He's asking for advice, and people are telling him not to go to the police um, directly to the police, but to go to the police co commissioner. Uh, finally, um, he's told to see a very important person, and that's nearly the character's name. It's italicized. Um, a very important person. And he meets this very important person, and he's basically admonished and thrown out the door. Uh, they want He wants nothing uh, to do with them, doesn't want to hear them, uh, thinks that he should go through the proper channels. At this point, Akeki is just going mad. He's, he's, he's delirious, uh, totally upset, really sad. Uh, he's um, kind of speaking gibberish uh, and dies. Um, the landlord uh, makes a point to say that he'll be in a pine box and not an oak box because he couldn't afford an oak coffin. Uh, that's not the end of the story. Uh, after this, there's a ghost running around St. Petersburg at night trying to rip off people's overcoats. Well, this very important person uh, learned of the death of Akeki and was mildly upset to hear it. Not terribly upset, but a little bit. And one day, uh, the very important person is uh, leaving a function, and uh, he's accosted by the ghost, and the ghost rips his overcoat off of him. And then, as the story goes, the ghost was never to be seen again, as if the very important person's overcoat must have fit him perfectly. Um, it's it's such a wonderful story. E even going through all the plot points uh, doesn't do it justice one bit. Um, Google's a fantastic writer. Um, he's lean, strong, funny, dark, um, really powerful, versatile writer um, turn, turn on a dime it turns into a ghost story um, I'll end this by something that uh, Dostoevsky said uh, in his time commenting on um, um, literature in his day in Dostoevsky's day and he said we're all in Gogol's overcoat so as far as Russian literature goes, the, 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 the modern novelists like Dostoevsky um, credit Gogol for a lot. 
and when you start reading some of the stories, it's very easy to see why. Um, he's a great writer. Um, he wrote uh, Dead Souls. He has a great um, play called uh, The Inspector General. Um, a terrific, uh, surrealist, absurd short story called The Nose. Um, a handful of other short stories. He's really a great writer. Um, so again, uh, happy Halloween, everybody. Um, please leave a comment if you would like. Uh, let me know if you've read Gobel. Um, and uh, thank you for watching. Bye.